God, I swear, if I get another shiny when we, on the stream, we start the freaking hunt, I'm gonna, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but it's just gonna be a... Hey guys, this is Tom Leo signing in. Welcome to another streaming bit on the Tom Leo channel. It's time for some more shiny hunting. This time we're doing shiny halucha. Um, as that is what our wheel landed on um, in the last in the last stream, because we got the shiny in the last stream. I don't have no idea what the hell is going on. Why I am getting this crazy amount of shiny luck? Past four streams I've done, I've gotten the shiny every single time. Like in or in the streams or in the streams that we started on. Like they've just been like super quick. And, it, and I don't know why. I mean, I feel like I know why. Um, but realistically, why? I don't get it. On the one hand, it would be kind of cool if I beat some world record of getting um, shiny Pokemon repeatedly in, in a series or whatever. But on the other hand, I still want to get rid of the Delibird shiny record. So... Maybe Halucha will be the one. Well, it's probably gonna do one or the other. Who the hell knows? Anyway, uh, let's get the show on the road. Welcome on in, Heather Flanagan, Ivan Peterson, Zeta, and Boss One the Mad Boss. How you guys doing? Hope all is well. Let's get started. All right, I got my eggs, and uh, I'm in the area around the towers. That, oh, hello, Mr. Golduck. How are you all doing tonight? I didn't realize I was this popular with the gold ducks. Sheesh. It's a lot of them. Anyway, it's uh So yeah, there's a there's a particular patch um patch of land over yonder. Or there's a halucha right there, but yeah, there's a there's a land over here where uh or up top here where haluchas typically spawn. So that's the area we're gonna be... We're gonna be sticking around first. Oh wait, no, it's not here. It's a little further out. It's somewhere, it's somewhere over here. Anyway, so what is going on with you guys? What is new in the life of you? I made an evil Santa care, evil Santa on character AI. Okay. What exactly does that entail? Outside the obvious. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's by those mountains. Once we get past this bridge, I should be able to. Uh oh. Out of the face. Oh yeah, I forgot I have this ability to fly over. Man, this thing just makes traversal so much easier. Yeah, so over this hill, um, Haluchas spawn a lot easier, so uh, this will probably be the area, or it's somewhere close by. Ah, here it is. Typically, where all the higher level uh, Pokemon tend to be. Is that a Dully Bird in there? Nope, that's just hooves. Wait, what the heck? Oh, I thought one of them was different. Dude, that's really hard to tell. This Santa ain't the Holly Jolly guy everyone knows. Oh, well, I kind of gathered that. Alright, first egg. Halucha is just a regular Halucha. Hope I don't get. 
Yonkers play a go-goat. Doesn't look like it. They're not really moving at all. Or they are moving, but they're not coming towards me. Yeah, they're just hanging around me. Just watching. I am a master of the goats, so that makes sense. If a wild Pokemon is going to be shiny, I'm going to guess it's going to be a grass type or electric. Well, there's only one... No, Florigus isn't a grass type. Or Floetta, whatever it's called. The pre... The pre-evolution of Florigus. Though, uh... I think there's only Go-Go's here, so that's the only grass type in this area. And the only electric type in here, I think, is, um, Luxrays. Instead, the Santa likes to spread pain and misery to the boys and girls. That's the first batch already done. Oh yes, don't forget. Oh, I just realized I also didn't put up the uh, eggs. Why do I keep forgetting to put the egg? Uh, why do I keep forgetting to put the number up? So this makes five now. Sheesh, I've been doing so horribly at keeping track of the freaking uh, number. For how many eggs I have? Uh, been doing. Or I forget to I forget to bring it up is what I meant to say. It's more of a Christmas horror movie Santa. Uh-huh. Because the trend nowadays is to just turn everything into a horror a horror thing, right? They they did that with um, Winnie the Pooh once that became uh, public domain. Type Zangus. Sounds deadly. Oh, there are other grass types in here. Okay. I stand corrected. Two grass types. But I think there's still only the um the electric type lux rays. Vespaquins up here. Yeah, this is a pretty good area to hunt for uh, haluchas, I'd say. A nice little loop. There's a lot of other places. Oh, guy. Yeah, these things. This is what I was talking about. Cause I don't think those are uh, shinies, or they are—they're not grass types, I should say. I think they're strictly fairy type, despite the fact that they have um, something related to grass uh, on them. The goal for horror filmmakers is to make everything scary once it reaches public domain. Or just like, or to like trick the system, because they did they did get away with that um, that Grinch horror film by just calling it the mean one.
there is the possibility of also getting a uh, shiny Dragonite. Which, if I remember correctly, shiny Dragonite is a, um, or its colored shiny is green. So that might be pretty cool. Might be time to get a haircut soon. Yeah, what makes things even more difficult is that for certain shinies that have like multiple different uh, color variation, it makes it that much harder to figure out which is the shiny. Unless there's like a whole group of them and you can like you can just see it on. Like the, like the Floettas, they're just, um, well, A, they're really small, so I wouldn't be able to tell unless I, like, looked really closely. And B, there's, like, three different variations, uh, for those. For that Pokemon. Uh oh. Don't know what I did there, but uh, okay. Seems like a sequel came out. Really? Didn't they just make that first movie and now they already have a, a sequel out? Seems like a rather ridiculous. How's it going, Mr. Noah? Welcome to the stream. Hope all is well, buddy. Yeah. Like, I literally... I literally don't know what the... That was Blissey's up here? What is a shiny Blissey? I actually don't know. If I do wind up getting a shiny today, please let it be from the wild and not... Or, well, actually I shouldn't say that because then it would probably spawn up. What is that? Oh, that's a Flar Flargamantis or whatever it's called. I was like, what the hell kind of Pokemon is that? Anyway, I was gonna say, like, if I'm if I am gonna get a shiny, please let it spawn from the wild. But then they might make it so that the wild haluchas uh, become shiny and I'm right back to where I was. So uh yeah, not uh So we're not gonna put that out in the universe. Because the universe just loves testing my patience. Shiny Blissey is almost the same, just more lighter pink. 
Oh, great. So one that you really gotta pay attention to. Because it's a different shade of its normal coloring. I always find those shinies to be so annoying. They just... What's the point... What's the point of having a mechanic that changes the color variation when it's not even gonna... When you don't even change it that much? until he was introduced uh, in this in the Suicide Squad movie. Ooh. Holy jeez, there's so many Noibats and Noiverns around here. Hanging Dylan, welcome to the stream, buddy. Hope all is well. Honestly, John Cena plays a good peacemaker. Well, seeing as how I never heard of Peacemaker. 
Um, I can't really, I can't really make any opinions on uh, on his performance because I don't know what Peacemaker is actually like in the comics or whatever. Great, I got Yon Goose by freaking Dragonite. today doing some Pokemon grinding. Cool, cool. difference in their the shiny difference for the floet must be must be in the body or something because there's different variation colored um, flowers and such it makes it very hard for me to believe that they have it makes it very hard for me to believe that they have um, Have uh, alterations to their flower. Tom, I got Spider Man 2018 on my PS5 console. I just haven't played it. Oh, that's good. still be a pretty fun game even after all this time. At least I think so. that one by accident. Kinda need that Pokemon. Flower? Do they come in white? Okay, five different colors of flowers for Floet. I mean, I feel like I could, I could just easily look this up and actually find the the answer to such a question, but I'm just choosing not to. there. Holy hell, there's a lot of, there's a hell of a lot of haluchas around here. Now it's starting to sound like a tongue twister. Holy hell, there's a hell of a lot of haluchas around here. Okay, maybe not that hard of a tongue twister. 
Currently putting together a team never realized it could be so fun. Oh, a Pokemon team. Holy jeez. So many freaking Pokemon just decided to spawn in all at once. Shiny, Flabebe, and Floette, and Florgus, they have purple color instead of green on their bodies. Ah, so it is the bodies that I have to pay attention to. Well, that's going to be hard for Floed because of how freaking tiny they are. Like, I know Game Freak wanted to give a sense of scale for these Pokemon, but sheesh. The number of crazy tiny Pokemon in this game is just... Unfathomable. Unfathomable blah 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 blah. I tried to do some competitive stuff in Sword, never finished it, so now I'm gonna. Is that sentence over? Or... Okay, now my guesses all failed now. Uh, did they? I actually didn't see what your guesses were. Sorry, bro. Yeah, seriously, you just can't see worth crap around here. See the purple and their tiny ass bodies. I know it's not the Pokemon I'm shiny hunting, but I'm just like... If it's there, and if it's a shiny, and I miss it, I'm gonna be really upset with myself. But yeah, I, I cannot tell what these... There's too much grass in the way. I guess the number is 6 and 12 and 18. Oh. Oh yeah, we long passed uh, those numbers.
Come on, why would you yawn goose me, Luxray? What have I ever done to you? You can try you can try zoom in by double press the home button. anyway. Oh, come on. Unless you're a shiny F off. What's up, little sweetheart? How are you? Mats is just hanging around. Sometimes my mouse is not moving. Was that your sensor, or is it because there's like stuff crowding uh, your desk? Observe it.
you stay back there. Damn it. Is that one Floetta? Did that one Floetta look different? Where is it? I thought I saw a Floetta that looked... That flower looked different. I know it's the body you're supposed to be looking at, but... Um... Maybe it was just the... Maybe I'm just seeing things. Hey, how's it going, Matt Kelly? Welcome to the stream, hope all is well. If shiny hunting Flabebe, will you pick the blue flower color? I don't know. I don't even know if I would hunt this one because of how ridiculously obnoxious it is. Twice on home button does not do any zooming. I managed to capture a shiny Shinx on Pokemon Legends Arceus last Saturday while I was doing level grinding and item grinding as well. Nice. Shiny Shinx has a really nice color. Pressing home button twice fast enough makes the zoom appear. Well, I'm pressing it super fast and nothing's working. See? That, that didn't do anything either. doesn't work. Oh, hey. Oh, no. Hey, I'm just trying to see what Pokemon are here! I do zoom in like that, but I don't know why it's not zooming in for you. Am I forgetting something? Well, I know, like, the standard zoom in in this game is like left trigger like that but it doesn't really do much you have to turn it on in the settings okay now I'm too lazy I don't want to do that I 
should have enough eggs to be able to last me the entire stream. Assuming, assuming the thing doesn't freaking hatch right away. Son of a bitch. At least if you're walk walking it, zoom a little bit in if you're not riding. going to be able to get out of these battles. I am just constantly being assaulted. Oh my god. Will you stop being a giant tool bag and let me escape? Are you kidding me right now? Hi, Monty. Oh my god, I can't get away from these Pokemon. They are literally just juggling me into one right after the other. Screw off, you little shite brains. Fun fact, there's an area in the Kizukama region that has a chance to spawn a level 100 Magikarp. And you can uh, shiny hunt it. A level 100 magic carp? <laughs> Sounds like such a waste. <laughs> Besides, I already have a shiny magic carp. Let's 
stop being annoying, can you, dog? I love you too, but you are such an indecisive little creep. Why he keeps busting down the door as it keeps getting closed? Shiny hunt to be like, be like, but anyone who tries to take my shiny look is gonna pay. Well, it does seem like I have. Oh, I didn't know there were Argonines and Growlers that spawn here. Oh, maybe it's something that only happens at night. Yeah. Oh yeah, there are some in the in like the surrounding area, but not like I didn't I didn't think there was one like in this specific area. I tried to do a Dragon Ball Super quote from when Goku was in uh, Molly. Or Molly? I hope I pronounced that right. Also, BRB. Alright, we'll be here, Twisted. Bye, Monty. Love you. See you again. See you again like five minutes later. Sorry if I'm not talking a whole lot. I just don't really have uh, much conversation in me right now. I mean, I'll, I'll try to make conversation with you guys as much as possible. I'm just... have a whole lot going on right now, so... My commentary might be, uh, might be a little lacking tonight.
Oh, shoot. Oh, I ran into the one that terrestrializes. Crap. Good thing smoke balls still work. and look for a nice shiny in the wild while you hatch eggs. I think I will. Uh-oh. What's uh-oh? No! Lucario's spawn in here. Luchas. I'm not killing all luchas, I'm releasing them in the wild. This isn't Pokemon Go era. We we're not savages. you'd be back. Psychopath. They've just been set free. Yeah, exactly. I swear, the hitboxes on some of these tinier Pokemon seem a bit off to me. I'm gonna go back to play Spinalcraft. It's a Minecraft server I'm in. Cool, cool.
good. Glad you're doing well, Mario Slash. actually hit that number. <laughs> well, that's probably a lie. I'm just like, I'm still like taken aback from like all the times that shinies have just popped up in like the streams we start looking for them. Started and then they just start, don't need to look anymore. <laughs> Give you a hug, Tom. Yeah, they just want to hug me with their claws and teeth. It's totally a hug. I'm gonna get volleyballed into another freaking uh, Pokemon. Typically, like if you're engaged in battle with another Pokemon, the others will just disperse from your general area, so you don't get trapped like that. But that one time, the game was just like, "Hey, let's do this, and let's put this one here, and let's put this Pokemon here." Wouldn't it be funny if we just put this Pokemon here? They never heard of personal space. No. Apparently this is Arceus' fault. Because in the... In the Sinnoh books, they say, um... He, uh... He made the godly decoration of Pokemon always having to greet, um... Uh, trainers, which is why they're always coming up to you to challenge you to a battle. This is getting really comfortable. My friend Michael W. plays Paper Mario A Thousand Year Door on the original GameCube. He's excited for the remake, uh, but I am. I am what? <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember um, Thousand Year Door. Good times. Still don't think I'm gonna get the remake because I really don't like uh, remakes. 
Plus, I already played... I already played the original, so I don't think there's any point. Like, don't get me wrong, I really... I love Thousand Year Door. Easily, in my opinion, is the best Paper Mario game ever made. But I just, I like with most remakes, I just don't see a point in uh, playing something that the only the only ma the only thing that they they did with it is uh, updating graphics and adding ex a little extra story, not a lot, just a little. But it, it essentially plays the exact same as the originals. And they charge you so much for those games. Like, like I understand that creating new new game IPs and like coming up with new original ideas is uh, is a little hard to do these days. But like, is it really that bad? You have to resort to like. Um, you have to resort to, like, releasing, um, an older, an older game with some updated stuff. And especially, especially at the prices that they keep selling them for, like, no, that's, that's, that's unacceptable. I, if you want to make... If you want to make a game that, if you want to bring back an old game and update it, update controls and graphics, uh, and show off this game to like a newer audience, by all means, go for it. Do not sell them at like the ridiculously high standards that video games are these days. Like for the amount of work that you put into that into making that remake no it is not worth the price you're asking for is the reason why you hate sticker star because of the battle mechanics I didn't mind uh Jeez, I'm getting ping-ponged around. It's okay, buddy. You can go. I didn't mind the mechanics that much. It wasn't like it was ridiculously hard to, like, wrap my head around. What I found to be annoying was the, um... Was the uh, the bosses and how you're required? You're only able to beat them is if if you had if you use specific stickers, and if you don't have those stickers, that you can't beat them and you can't progress. Which is not how I think games should be played. I believe that if you're playing a game, you should be allowed the freedom to uh, play the game or play a boss however you, uh, wish to do it. Like, I don't mind, like, if you put, like, a particular challenge in it to make it more, to make something more interesting, but if something has to be done in a boss fight, if, some, if something has to be done in the exact same way, so, like, everyone has to do it the exact same way, then that's not uh, that's not all that fun because then everybody has to do the, the same thing as uh, the first guy who did it. It's not a unique experience. Okay, I gotta go now. It was great seeing you again. Until next time, have an amazing day. I still guess between 40 and 90. I'll see ya. All right. You have a you have a good night. You have a good night, Ivic. Color Splash did that even more. They did, 
Um, I would argue though, in Color Splash, it's better. Like, it seems like, I mean, yes, you if you want to beat a boss in those games quickly, specific, um, specific cards, uh, will help you out with that. But it doesn't seem like it's the only way to beat a boss. So you have that, so you kind of have that flexibility. And plus they made it, um, uh, they made a way... They put in a, a mechanic that allows you to, um get hints as to where you can find or what the the card you need in order to uh, in order to beat the boss easier stickers are never had that Oh yes, that's right, I need to switch over to the next track. shiny yeah it sure is yes I got me a shiny and it's not the shiny of the one that I'm looking for thank god knock on wood I'll take it I've never seen this shiny before I will be happy to catch this boy bad boy if only it'll stay in the freaking ball say third time is the charm oh it's green I thought it was I thought it was like a a weird gray yellow color I was about to say it I was about to say like looking at the shiny in the overworld in this lighting is like that is super ugly but this one's not so bad. Let's see what this uh, shiny low low kicks is all about. Yeah, I thought it was I thought it was yellow or like yeah like a grayish yellow. It's more of a lime green. You know, like a like an actual grasshopper look to it. Throat chop, sucker punch, first impression, bounce, swarm as its ability. It's pretty careful by nature. It's quick to flee. Well, it didn't flee fast enough from me. Because it is now mine. Hee <laughs> hee. That actually rhymed when I didn't mean to. I thought that was shiny for a second. I was like, somehow that turned into a shiny in my eyes. But yeah, I actually didn't know what shiny low kicks looked like, and now I do, and it looks uh, looks pretty good.
Well, I don't think either of them are bad games. I... I only say, like, a uh, Sticker Star is bad. Col out of the two, I much prefer uh, Color Splash over Sticker Star. Sticker Star is that it's not as epic as the first three Paper Mario games. And I do have to admit that the battle mechanics were difficult to get used to, but I don't hate it. Uh, one second. One of the, um, one of the things that I didn't like about, um, those particular games, and, um, and more specifically, with, um, with the Paper Mario games after, um, after Super Paper Mario, is that they, um, they lean way too heavily on the on the paper side of its name. Like they started making a lot more jokes surrounding paper, or more mechanics surrounding paper. Like in the new, um, or I guess well, it's not really new anymore. In Origami King, they like they went so hard on like. Painting the fact that this is a paper world filled with paper people, and I'm just. And the bosses, the main bosses. It makes sense in context, but they. But as but as actual boss fights, they do not. They do not appeal to me at all. Like. Like, the first Paper Mario game had you fighting things like giant thunderclouds, uh, evil ice kings, uh, and an invincible tub of lava. But in, like, Origami King, you had, like, colored pencils and scissors. And, you know, it's just... They're, again, it, it, might, it makes sense in context, but it's not really, they're not really bosses that I want to, I want to be taking on in this supposed epic adventure. Like, the sub-bosses were more fun to fight than, uh, than those things. But yeah, they leaned... I mean, technically... Technically, Paper Mario Thousand Year Door did do... Um, some papery mechanics. Like, they did those... Uh, they did those cursed chests... That... Um, folded you into different... Uh, into different things. That I didn't mind because it was actually clever. But it's just these days... They lean so hard into the paper side of their name that when they... That... That it just gets really... Dull and, um... And it just, it just stops being funny.
Like, I understand that they... I understand that the Nintendo games are supposed to be uh, targeted for, like, uh, children and such. But it just feels like such a huge shift in tone to go from things like um, an evil monster uh, trapped, trapped behind an ancient door. Uh, that you need to stop in order to save the world. You go from something like that to... Uh, to all the color in the world is being... is being sucked out. We need to get the color back because the color made someone evil. Like... not really... It just doesn't really have the same... It just doesn't have the same effect as uh, those previous um, stake... Uh, previous games and the stakes they had. go back to the subject of the tone shift. Um, that's kind of been a problem with a lot of... It's kind of been the problem with a lot of, um... With just media in general. There used to be, like, so many different, um... Shows and games that, uh, had much... They had, they had pretty dark tones. Like, they were very serious, and, like, they were, and they were still made for kids, like. Like, uh, Batman the Animated Series, that was a show targeted for kids, and it, and it had guns in it. days but these days everything has to be like the serious the serious tone of those uh the serious tone is just completely gone from like all cartoons targeted for kids like i'm not saying like every show has to be like Um, seriously super serious or whatever but 
to me, what this is telling me is that studios are not treating, uh, are not treating, are not treating kids with, um, with proper respect. I mean, you can apply that to, like, just about, you can apply that to just about, um, any, uh, any sort of medium, but what I mean, what I'm trying to say is, is like, they've, they've just like taken away all the seriousness of the old stuff and just like replaced it with brainless entertainment and people are like, yeah, this, this will be enough. And the worst part is it actually works because nowadays they just Because they've been led to believe that this- Ah, damn it, not again. Because they've been led to believe that this is the way cartoons should be, because that's the only option that they're given on, uh, on television these days. Like, they're never given a chance to actually, uh, see those, uh, more mature subjects. Because honestly, like, I think if you can, if you can treat, like, I'm not saying, I'm not saying you have to, like, have a show dedicated to kids with, like, blood and gore, because that would definitely not be suitable for kids at all. What I'm saying is, is when you treat, when you treat a children's audience, um, like they're not stupid, I think it shows, I think it, you're able, you're able to like teach, I think you're able to teach them a lot better and you can like get them to understand um, uh, different things so that by the time something like that happens in the real world, it's like, oh, I, under, I understand this completely. I know exactly how to handle this sort of thing. Oh god, like Teen Titans Go. Uh, yes. That is the best example. Like, the original Teen Titans, like, when that show... When that show first uh, came into existence, like, it became such an icon. Like, the characters... The characters were great um, and unique. The villains... Um, well, certain villains were very... Like, main villains were definitely, uh, memorable. And, like, the, the different topics and themes were, like... It just, it just really shows that that show actually, uh, cared about their audience. And, um... That they didn't, that they didn't see us, that they didn't see us as mindless, uh children who were incapable of understanding something who were incapable of understanding something of something uh, of that nature but then Teen Titans Go comes around and it literally does the opposite just treats it just it just treats everything like a joke and is just and it just acts like And it just it just treats it treats children like they don't need anything. They don't need to be. They don't need to learn any of these serious topics. We just need to like make it really stupid and dumb, just stupid and dumb enough so that they continue to stay engaged into the stupidity of it all. And like honestly, it's it's. It's that kind of thinking in television shows in particular that is just, in my opinion, just ruining the uh, development of a um, a child's uh, a child's mind and understanding. Titans Go is pretty messed up since it has 
bad animation, bad voice acting direction, and a bad story. And bad scripts as well. Yeah, it's just... It's just bad no matter how you look at it. But they deliberately make it... So... So... Brainless... That... That kids get sucked into that sort of thing. the shows that I watched growing up as a kid. Like, I don't mind a show that has, like, that has, like, humor and, um, a little bit of, like, a, like, a little bit of brainless entertainment is fine, but when you do it at death, it just, it does so much more harm than good. Same thing with, like, um, in the opposite extreme, like, I'm not saying, like, shows have to be, like, bloody or gory or anything like that, because too much of that is not good either. But, like, a lot of shows back in the, um, back when, uh, I was growing up, that makes me sound like an old man, back in my day, we didn't have weren't subjected to madness entertainment. I don't know why I went Texian all of a sudden, but yeah. Um, but we had a lot of shows that that still had a lot of engaging stuff in it, but it also had a lot of different um, serious elements of of real world stuff. Like, in fact, um, one show in particular that I started, uh, watching clips of is, uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, and, and, uh, Legend of Korra, because I like that show as well. Whether you, no matter where you stand on... The, uh, the Legend of Korra. I think we can all agree that Avatar as a whole is probably one of the greatest series uh, to ever to ever exist. Hey, Twisted, welcome back. Uh, yes, I did get a shiny, actually. Welcome back, Boss 1. I got me a shiny, uh, low kicks. Look how nice and green that is. So yeah, pretty cool. But yeah, there's a lot of, like, there's a lot of great... There's a lot of great, um... Jokes thrown in, uh, the middle as well. But it takes... But it does, but it keeps the same serious tone of, of like, it's, it's a world that needs, uh, help, and, uh, this one person is going, is going to be the one that's going to help this world and try to, try to make things better the best they can. You know, just... Just simple things like that can, can keep things really engaging. Yes, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, great action, like there's a lot of great action, uh, great voice acting, and and yeah, so. 
Oh, and let's not forget the the character developments uh, in uh, in those shows. Yeah. Shows like that um, are honestly what I feel like kids shows should aspire to be. Because when you when you treat your audience in my mind it, when you treat your audience with uh, with respect and like and show uh, and show different things that reflect our own world and how uh, and what we can do to like uh, make things better you, you really start to create you really start to create a society that isn't going into this world with like um, with like a blindfold over their eyes because if you just give them nothing but like uh, monotonous brainless entertainment they're gonna think oh the rest of the world is exactly like this and we could be as crazy and as silly as we want as and, and then they finally get out there and it hits them like a ton of bricks and then they start well I feel like one of two things happen one they start they either they either deny everything and just like pretend that everything is exactly the same as they thought it was even though it clearly isn't or they start making some crazy, um, or they start doing some like crazy extremes to try and make this world feel like the way that they thought it would be through uh, entertainment like that, or if you can even call it entertainment. But you get what I'm saying, right? It's stuff like that just does more harm than good. But yeah, it's like a little bit of a little bit of mindless entertainment is fine. But the fact is like almost every single type of kids show is mindless. And because it's also mindless, it's I feel like it's doing a lot more harm than good. The Legend of Korra doesn't deserve the hate. I do like The Legend of Korra better than Avatar The Last Airbender. Oh yeah, I... And that's another thing that kind of bugs me when it comes to like... When it comes to like great shows that get like, uh, sequel shows or whatever. Oh, hey, what's going on here? We got a star spirit raid going on. How's it hanging, raiders? Welcome to the stream. Hope all is well. Just give me one second. Can you check? Okay. All right. All right. Welcome in, raiders. Hope all is well. Welcome on in, uh, Connor Patrickson, Brown Diddley, Connor Plays Games, who looks like it's the raid target. Uh, yeah, how's it going, bro? It's been a while. Hopefully you're having a good day. Hope your stream went well. And, uh, yeah, hope all is well. We're just, uh, shiny hunting... Halucha right now. Um, so yeah, as uh, as I was saying, what I really hate is when uh, sequels, when people like just 
shite on sequel shows because it's not the same as uh, the original. Or like, the lead character is not the lead character of the new show is not the same as the lead character of the old show. Um, but the thing I don't, but the thing that, that people don't seem to understand is that that's kind of the point. Because if you want, if you make a show with like new faces, but they behave the exact same way as the old characters, um, then it's not, then it's not really its own show, right? And, and it's always one of those situations of like, the sequel show like has a lot to live up to because of the original show leaving behind such a huge legacy for the for this new show to fill so of course it's going to get compared to uh the old show and everyone gets so nitpicky about every little detail some details and some arguments for like their reason for not liking a certain for not liking a, a certain show i can get behind but like people get really get really anal mad about like when things are just when they just they just find something that they don't like and they like they like focus in on it and they just like ignore everything else which which I definitely don't think uh which I definitely don't think should, um... Like, I feel like people need to be a bit more open-minded when it comes to, like, the, um... Like, when a new... <sighs> Sheesh, what am I trying to say? I'm stumbling over my own words. How do you feel if there was a kid show involving hate speeches going on from villains and the protagonists had to stop these villains using hate speech? How do you feel about this concept? Well, it's definitely... It's definitely a concept that, um... That probably doesn't get addressed enough. Like, it's happening a, a lot in our uh, main society. But you can kind of... I feel like, in some, in some cases, hate speech and other other type of uh, villainous activities kind of go hand in hand. So, it's not like... Like, it's a part... It, there's an aspect to it, but there's also... Um, but it's not like the main focus of it, you know? Yeah, it was fun. I played Paper Mario 64, and let's just say a prologue should not be two hours long. Oh, uh, wait, was it really that long? I actually, it's been, it's been a while since I played, uh, Paper Mario 64. That was such a fun game. I, uh, I, I enjoyed that game a lot. Alright, have a good night, Connor Patrickson and Connor Plays, for, uh, thank you guys for joining in on the raid, and hope you guys have a great night. It's okay for you to like. It's okay for you to like Mario and Luigi Partners in Time, though I personally don't like it because of how the Yoshi's are portrayed. What's wrong with the Yoshi's? I never saw any issue with the Yoshi's. But yeah, I like, me personally, I really like Mario and Luigi Partners of Time. I admit there's a little bit of biasism towards that game because it was the first DS game I ever played. Um, and I spent a lot of time playing that game. Like, a lot of time. 
But even outside my own biasisms, I think that game should be worth... People should try it out at least once. Because it does get more fun and uh, the story gets gets crazy as you go on, as the further you keep going and it's just, yeah. It is a very good game. But yeah, the, the constant need to like, It's more the giant shrub Yoshi eating him and the Yoshis are letting it happen. Well, they're not exactly letting it happen. They just don't know what to do with that thing. I mean, what would you do if you saw if you saw a giant alien uh, monster with uh, with a Yoshi tongue coming at you? Not much you can do against such a creature. Bowser's Inside Story is my favorite in the Mario and Luigi games. Yeah, I enjoyed Bowser's Inside Story too. Great memories from that game. But yeah, there's... It's a combination of... It's mainly... I think that's mainly what it is when it comes to, like, the hate that, like, sequel shows gets. Um, it's just biasisms. They... They want things... They want it, they want they want the sequel show to give them the exact same feeling that they got from uh, from the original show and like relive their childhood. Well, the problem is it's not from your childhood. It is literally a new show that is being made. It's set in the same universe, but it's not the same um, the same story or the same characters that uh, grew up with. I mean, like, sometimes they'll make a sequel show and they'll have, like, the same characters. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of, like, there's a huge nostalgia factor when it comes to, like, what people like about... Where, um... Like, they're just, they're just so adamant about, um, wanting to get that exact same feeling. But the problem is, they can't give you the exact same feeling because, um, things change, times change, and, um... Sorry, I'm getting slightly distracted. I got a lot of eggs. But the point when it comes to like uh, character character hatred, like a lot of people didn't like uh, didn't like Korra, and there's like I've heard like some arguments where I can sort of understand them, but like a lot of a lot of the arguments as to why people don't like um, Korra is because she's not the same as Aang, and I'm just like. Yeah, that's kind of the point. She's not the same as Aang because she's her own person. Like, do you not understand how, um, how people work? No two people are exactly the same. And what's more is that... The reason they do this sort of thing, uh, they being uh, television, or the people that like make the shows, the reason they do that is because they 
they want to make it they want to make a show they want to make those shows stand out in their in their own way and not just be like you know like a like an ex like just an extension of the original you know Like, it's the exact same thing, and like, because, because, uh, people, because people have such nostalgic, they focus in on those, um, on those character, um, differences and such, and like, just zoom in, focus in on it, and just like, find a reason to like, not like the character because of those, uh, those differences. And they just wind up not liking those characters. It's the it's the exact it's the same thing that happened to um, uh, Jason Todd when he replaced uh, the original Robin. It's the same thing that happened to uh, Boruto in the Naruto series. Um, although it 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 feel it honestly it feels like sequel shows are constantly getting getting and sequel characters are getting so much hate because of their differences with um differences to the main character the only exception to this rule that i have found and i can't say for certain because i haven't seen the show myself is the new uh pokemon protagonist Lilico or whatever her name is She's the one who replaced um, Ash in the Pokemon anime. People seem to really like her, and I'm not 100% sure what the reason is for that, because again, I haven't seen the show or whatever. Um, but yeah, typically, like, sequel, sequel shows and sequel characters will get, will automatically receive a lot of flack due to nostalgia reasons and wanting to, um, And, uh, wanting to compare those to the originals, you know? Well, this is the first time in a while. We reached a hundred eggs. So I don't know how it's supposed to be pronounced. I mean, the Yoshi people made really dumb decisions, like staying out in the open where the shrub Yoshi can easily eat them. Outside. I I don't know, I don't have much of a defense for that. I think of an example of my least favorite sequel has to be Empire Strikes Back. I never liked that movie because of multiple reasons, and it's my only least favorite Star Wars movie. Really? That's your least favorite, least favorite Star Wars movie? Like, I mean, also, uh, tying into what I was saying about uh, nostalgia and um, comparisons and such, uh, 
Last Jedi kind of dropped the ball big time. I just, it definitely, it definitely seemed like that. Like, I, I, uh, I heard a lot of different opinions about that movie. And I understood what the director was trying to go for, but it just didn't work the way that I think he was trying to do it. Um, so... Yeah, there was just a lot of... It just didn't... Like, I really enjoyed, um, personally, my unbiased opinion, um, episode 7, uh, The Force Awakens, I'd say, uh, is my favorite Star Wars movie. And a lot of it was, um, a lot of it did play very heavily on, um, taking elements from, uh, from the original trilogy, specifically... Uh, a new hope but it, but they made it but they made it um, unique in a way so that it stands out as its uh, its own film like it's not it's not a one-to-one -one, it's not a one-to-one -one comparison of those uh, of a new hope and uh, force awakens and then and then Last Jedi came out and just, like, kind of screwed everything up. Because everything was just split in a way that was, like, not really coherent. And, like, all the stuff that, all the information you got from that movie was just sort of, like, I don't know. It just, again, it just didn't work the way I think the director was trying to go for. You know, I guess people will really get tired seeing Ash taking too much from focus from the source material games plot, or he might have lost too much in the Pokemon League. Well, I mean, he became like a like a, a master champion, so I don't think he lost any uh, any credibility or whatever. The sequel trilogy shouldn't deserve the hate, nor the prequel trilogy as well. Oh, the prequel trilogy, uh, for sure. Actually, it doesn't get, it does not get hated as much as it used to. Like, a lot of people are, there's a lot of people coming out saying, um, that they actually, that they actually, um, they finally understand what they were, what that, um, what those movies were trying to go for and they um and now that they understand they like it that's the thing if you just do a little if you do a little less criticizing and more understanding you may come to actually like something that you didn't think you would like i also don't like kylie kuba because she only cares about the news and not the yoshis well she's a reporter what do you expect Hey, how's it going, Connor? Ex exotics? I hope I'm pronouncing that right. If not, uh, I greatly apologize. Do you want a shiny legendary? Uh, thank you, but um, I'm actually going to be wrapping up stream. Uh, but I appreciate the offer. Uh, but yeah, we are going to wrap up stream. Wow. Um, this is a first. We... <laughs> Literally the last four streams, we have caught every single shiny that we went after on the first, um, on the first stream go. But now we're officially ending, um, without catching a shiny, which feels very bizarre to me. But you know what? I am perfectly okay with it. I need, a we need to bring back the longer hunts. Especially the ones that will get rid of the... Deli bird score. Ah! 
Anyway, thank you guys for coming on out. Hope you all enjoyed your time here. Let's give thanks to the people who made this stream the best stream possible. Uh, shout out to Connor Plays Games for the Star Spirit raid. If my mods could drop a link to his channel one more time, that'd be greatly appreciated. The reason why Empire Strikes Back is my least favorite are asteroid scenes, are pacing issues, Han and Leia romance should have gone to Cloud City instead of the asteroid, and Darth Vader duel. You don't like the Darth Vader duel? I thought it was pretty good. Oh, I will say, um, in regards of The Last Jedi, the, um, the battle, the team-up battle with Rey and Kylo Ren against the, um, against the guards, that was dope. I liked that. Anyway, um, it looks like we also just have our gold and platinum tier members left. Uh, we have zero gold members, but we have... Heather Flanagan, Mike Flanagan, Mr. Chipmunk, Mr. Coconut, Daniel Perez, and Top Secret Yoshi as our Platinum members. Thank you for hitting the like button as well. We hit seven likes. in mind we might we could go to just gotta wait for an ad to finish two ads for my favorite Star Wars. My unbiased opinion for my favorite Star Wars movie is episode 7. My biased opinion <laughs> is episode 3 because it was the first Star Wars movie I ever saw. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty, guys. So, uh, I don't know if this guy's gonna be wrapping up his stream. I don't think he will. Uh, but if he does wind up wrapping up his stream, I greatly apologize. That's a little, uh, outside my control. But we're gonna go raid a streamer by the name of The Realm 14, who is currently playing some Pokemon Violet. Uh, I'm not quite sure what he's doing. I'm not sure if he's doing story or what. But let's go raid him by using the hashtag LeoRaid to let him know where we all came from. Guys, this is gonna do it for the streaming vid. Let me know in the comments below what other games I'm gonna play. But until then, I am Tom Leo. You've been Wesley Fantabulous People, and I'm signing off. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next stream. Peace.